What's up? Welcome back. My name is Matt. This is Hidden Light. Today I want to talk about zone focus, which is the answer to manual focus problems. I should know <laughs> because I suck at manual focus. Like a lot. I, ugh. it's like when I'm doing manual focus, it's almost like I'm not wearing glasses even though I am. Or like I'm, I'm trying to make this statement about what it's like to be like a semi-blind person who can't see it all without glasses. Like I just, I don't have what it takes some of the time. If the camera makes it easy enough for me, sure. But I finally embraced zone focus as a way to live, especially with cameras that I'm not particularly familiar with or that have sort of dark, terrible viewfinders of which there are many in the world. What is zone focus. You might ask, as someone who doesn't have to use it because you can actually see, uh, let's just talk about it for a second. Zone focus is basically a way to focus by distance. So you don't have to look through the viewfinder in order to know that your subject is in focus. You can do that based on distance and your innate ability to tell how far away something is. It doesn't really have to be precise especially as you stop down. So if you were to watch like, say, uh, the Bill Cunningham documentary, which used to be available on like YouTube and Netflix and stuff. It's a great movie, highly recommend watching. If I can find the link, I'll put one below. He does not waste time focusing his camera. He sets his distance on his focus ring and shoots. And the only reason he has to raise the camera to his eye at all is to compose. He knows what the situation will be for metering. He knows that his subject's in focus because he knows how far away it is. So you are, I don't know, a distance away from me, right? I don't even have to know exactly how far you are to zone focus on you, the camera, the viewer. All I have to do is stop down and give myself enough range. So if I know that you're, say, I don't know, how far away do you think you are? 10 to 15 feet away from me which is probably accurate, we should measure it, uh, then all I have to do is give myself that range on the lens. So I'll show you exactly what this means. On many lenses, not all, but many, there are these goofy numbers, right? And they're the same numbers and they repeat from a center point out to whatever the maximum, sorry, minimum, sorry, maximum aperture is on the lens, the smallest hole, right? Highest number, smallest hole. So let's just go ahead and give ourselves f22, which is that aperture. And then on my lens, I'll see 22 listed twice, one here and one here. What that's showing me is that on the distance measurements on the focus ring, everything between this number and this number is in focus. So for instance, let's pick feet because I'm an American, damn it. And I measure things in feet and not meters. Uh, freedom units. So if I put infinity at F22, because I want something that's far away to be in focus. At F22, everything from this distance, right between five and seven, all the way to infinity is in focus. What number's between five and seven? Call it six feet. So everything from six feet away from the camera all the way to infinity is in focus in every shot at f22 with this focus ring here. Let's say I wanted to focus a lot closer than that, right? So I'm gonna just go ahead and focus all the way at the other end of this. And I'm gonna put one and a half feet at f22. I get everything all the way from one and a half feet to 1.75 feet in focus. The closer you focus, the less you get. That's the way it works. But if I wanted to photograph you and you're 10 to 15 feet away from me, all I gotta do is give myself somewhere from 10 to 15 feet on my focus ring and an aperture that will fit. So let's say I think you're at 12 feet, right? I'm gonna put this right between 10 and 15. That means I could, I could open up a fair bit. I can come all the way to, there's 4.8, there's, 5.6, there's f8, 
There's a full 11, 16 and 22. I could probably shoot this at say 5.6. And if, as long as I know that you're between 10 and 15 feet away from me, I'm set. I don't have to focus. I don't have to hold it to my eye and suffer through trying to figure out how far away you are. I just know that you're in focus. And you can buy yourself an extra stop. Let's say I go to F8 on this lens and there's the eight mark and there's the also eight mark. So I've got from like nine to like 20 feet. You kind of have to ballpark. A lot of these photographers that use zone focus a lot of the time will be in the F11 and be there sort of club. Because at F11, you start to get an actual bit of range, right? There's an 11 mark. There's an 11 mark. So I get from 7 to 30 feet ballpark. That's pretty good. That's a fair amount of everything in focus all the time. In order to meter at F11, all I have to do is choose a shutter speed, and I'm done. Because I'm already stuck at F11. My focus is already set. So, if you suck at manual focus like I do, or you're, say diving underwater and it's really hard to focus through the mask on your scuba apparatus or uh, for whatever reason you can't figure out whether something in your scene is in focus just zone focus that shit and you don't have to worry about it at all kind of cool right uh it only works of course when your lens has your zone focus distances uh both printed on the lens and of course on your actual focus distances uh, a lot of modern cameras don't bother with that, or lenses. So that sucks. But a lot of the older ones that we use, you and I being filmographers, have that stuff, so you can use it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's just my little aside on zone focusing. It's fun, it's useful, the masters used it. Masters used it. And now you can too. So try it. Go um, F11 and be there. F-16 and be there. F-64. Okay, bye.